What's up guys, Mitchell Wise, Town & Country TV. Today, we've been on YouTube for almost a decade and I've never done anything like this. This is a Ford man's perspective of the new 2019 Chevrolet Silverado. And with us, we've got Mr. Bobby Coleman. Um, he has been the, uh, he, he's with Southern Comfort Performance, if you did not know, uh, but he's been on our channel multiple times and he is actually, he and their company are the people that were able to supply us this fantastic truck or Maybe it's not a fantastic truck after the time we get through seeing it, uh, but this is going to be our totally biased review of the new 2019 Chevrolet Silverado. Before we get started, though, I want to let you know this video is being recorded completely on a GoPro Hero 7, and uh, in fact, that is what we're going to be giving away. Now, if you want to know how to win this GoPro Hero 7, by the way, you're going to get the brand new one still in the box, is hit the link down in the description just after you subscribe to our channel. So subscribe to Town & Country TV, follow the link down in the description, that'll teach you how to join the contest automatically. Now without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the truck. First up, let's talk about the front end of the truck. We're talking about the outside, rest of the outside. Then we're going to jump inside of the vehicle and then we're going to finish it up with the test drive itself. Now, once again, I've already told you this is going to be a totally biased review. Um, I, I personally feel like this front end is a little bit over-engineered. As you can see, I do like the grille itself. I like the fact that it's color-coded to the rest of the truck, whereas the XLT is going to be painted magnetic gray no matter what. I do like the fact that they painted this to match the rest of the truck. Um, but what I... what where things start to disconnect a little bit with me is this headlight. If you'll notice, this is one big, probably very expensive headlight, and it just kind of wraps in and out and in and out. And I'll tell you the one thing that I do not like about this front end. I, it, like I said, I'm trying to be as unbiased as I can. Not really possible, but uh, this big fin, it's kind of like it's kind of like if you looked at the Lexus LFA, and I'll put a picture of that on the screen. You look at a Lexus LFA, but you also look at the Camaro, it just kind of looks like they're just like, okay, well, we need to oh, engineer it enough to where it looks very, very different for the next year. Uh, but let's come around to the side and let's take a look at the wheels themselves. Now, this is a Z71. This one's got the 18 inch wheels because once we had already mentioned, Southern Comfort is going to take this truck. They're going to lift it with a, is it a six inch kit, Bobby? So they're going to lift it with their six inch kit, 35 inch BFG AT KO2 tires. We were able to snatch this one before they got to converting it. Uh, but at the end of the day, this one lists for about 52 grand. And if you look at a comparable F-150, it's going to be almost the exact same price, but you get a lot more extra options. In fact, we're going to do another video on that where it compares the two as a side to side thing. This is going to be just primarily the, the video that reviews the truck itself. Um, I do like the fact that they've got the Z71 on the front fender. Uh, I do like the way that that looks. I also like the fact that on the mirrors themselves, they've got that painted black to, you know, kind of contrast that red all the way through and through. I do really like the way, and I can't believe I'm saying this, I do like the way that the side of the truck looks, but that's about it. Let me take a look at the backside and I'll show you what that looks like. As far as a design element, I do like the fact that they've got Chevrolet stamped into the bed of the truck or into the tailgate of the truck. I do think that that looks nice. Um, I, I, and I also like the fact that the truck has a soft open. Wait a second. It did. Hold on. Let's try this again. Oh, did that break something? Okay. Let's try, this, let's try this again. I do like the fact that this thing has got a soft open. Okay, so the truck is supposed to have a soft open. Um, <laughs> kind of, I guess you gotta kind of help it get started. Uh, the F-150 XLT does not have the soft open that doesn't work, uh, but the, the Lariat does have a, a soft open that does work. Um, and as you guys know that Ford does not, uh, Ford is the only somebody that's got the tailgate step in the actual bed or in the tailgate of the vehicle. Instead, what you have got um, is these, these side steps. Now, as you guys have noticed in a couple of our videos that I've been holding my cell phone, the reason I'm holding the cell phone is actually the microphone. So just to let y'all know that, uh, that way you can actually hear me. But pretend that you've got one hand filled up and let's pretend it's that left hand and you wanted to try and get in the truck with, with just the one hand. Okay, so you can do it. It can be done, uh, but it's not easy. Now, let, let's say that, you know, you want it, you have access to the other hand. You've got these little holders right here, but you still have the cord 
and I know I'm over dramatizing or whatever they call it, but the fact that you do have this cord right here where you would normally want to get, you know, put your foot in, you have to make sure that you don't trip over that. So that's just something to know. And so once again, I'm not sitting here, you know, just trying to, I know we work for Ford. I know I'm biased, but it, I just wanted to kind of show you some of the things as a Ford perspective. What am I looking at on this Chevrolet truck? Um, some other things that I do like is the fact that they've got the uh, LED lighting in the bed of the truck. Here's the problem. There's no switch for that LED lighting in the bed of the truck at all. So if you want LED lighting to turn on, you're in the bed of the truck like I am. I've got to get down, get out of the bed, turn it on inside the cab, get back into the bed, and then I can see what I'm doing in the middle of the night. The Ford F-150 has a button located right there. We're going to talk a lot about this in just a second when we go take this thing for a test drive, uh, but I want to show you guys a couple of the features while we've got the camera mobile and it's moving, that kind of a thing. Um, as you can see, this one does have the claw seats. Um, the claw seats are okay. There's nothing really wrong with them, but I will tell you, as far as the headrests are concerned, you don't have the ability to tilt them like the Ford F-150 does, and so that's that's prime. You know, this button is strictly, thank you, Bobby, go ahead. That button is literally just to take it up and down, uh, not forward and back. Uh, to get it comfortable with your head. The other thing that I notice is the F-150 XLT that's in the same price point is going to have power seats on both sides. On this truck, you actually have one lever. You have to slide it forward and you have to tilt it back manually. So it, it kind of feels like a they cheaped out a little bit on that to um, to save a little bit of money. I mean, not, not that big of a deal or whatever, but um, let's do this. Let's take a look at the back seat and compare that to the F-150. Uh, before we do that, though, let's take a look at a couple of things we're going to talk about in just a second you can see you've got your infotainment system looks like it's about the same size as the ford obviously it's going to have a different operating system but uh and we're going to talk about this here in just a second again but you have the usb c in addition to normal usb and then you also have your powerpoint and then you also have your power outlet which um as uh, we'll mention in the f in a second you've got the power outlet in the bed of the truck as well now that we're in the back seat of the truck let's show you how much legroom you have before we do that though i want to let you know i put the seat all all the way back on the driver's side so that way you can accurately tell how much legroom you have in the rear of the truck. It does look like, and I haven't actually put a pencil to it, but it does look like Chevrolet increased the amount of cab capacity in the back seat, but it's still definitely a lot smaller than the Ford F-150. I'm six foot three inches tall, and as you can see, this is exactly how I would sit in this truck. Uh, if I'm on a long road trip, this is exact. I mean, I, I'd like my legs wider apart, but just so you can see how much leg room there is, uh, I've got about a half inch before I'm actually physically touching the seat. But the good news is this truck, the seat is all the way back now. And as you can see, I've got it on the screen as well. The Ford F-150 has got a significant more amount of leg room in the back seat. As far as the cargo capacity, you do have the ability just to lift up the seat on both sides. And as you can see, um, you do have an area that you can store some stuff. This is not a load flat floor like the Ford F-150 has, uh, but you do have a nice little cargo capacity storage area right here. Um, to me, I would prefer to have a totally load flat floor in case you wanted to uh, lay something down or like a TV or something like that. Uh, you'd have that ability to set the seats back down. Literally, you just pull them and you are taken care of. Now, there is a couple of trick little um, options for storage that actually the seat opens up and it gives you the ability to store some stuff in there. But one of the things I want to show you is how flimsy is this? I mean, oops, sorry about that. Okay, so it, it didn't even fit a GoPro. <laughs> Okay, so maybe the storage isn't that good of an option, but um, the main thing that I'm worrying about is the longevity of this because literally just two fingers, this thing is wiggling to death and it's a, it's a brand, new, brand new truck. So very interesting just to see the back seat of it. As far as the back of the truck, you'll notice that this rear window looks like it's straight out of 1995 with the two, actually three separate panels of glass. The Ford F-150 has a solid piece of glass that goes all the way through that has a small cutout for that sliding rear window. Uh, this one has three separate panels and it just kind of looks a little bit on the cheap side when you compare it to the Ford. The other thing is, is this little plastic piece. So the rest of this truck is metal, but this piece is plastic. Almost looks like a spoiler straight out of Fast and the Furious. <laughs> I've talked way too much about this truck. Let's go ahead and hop in the driver's seat and let's go take this thing for a test drive. 
All right, now let's go ahead and take this thing for a test drive. Uh, I've got my man, Mr. Bobby Coleman. Uh, he's the guy that uh, makes us look so good with the Southern Comfort conversions. He's kind of the, the master of disaster, but he was the one that was actually so kind enough to let us drive this vehicle, show it to us, let us compare it. And uh, as I said earlier, I'm going to try and make this as unbiased, but it's gonna to be totally biased as I possibly can. So let's go ahead and take this thing for a test drive. Uh, oh, wow. That, that I didn't even, that's a big difference. Okay, so what we're looking at is the backup camera itself uh, is definitely a step up in the right direction as far as uh, what they were coming from, but it still looks kind of like a low resolution camera when you compare it to the Ford. Um, Bobby, what were some of the things that you noticed about the truck? Well, just the, the updated inside is what I know. All this is the cluster and everything's new. It looks like it's pretty simple to, to operate. Yeah. It looks like it. I, I haven't actually gotten in and played with it yet, but the, the main thing I wanted to do is kind of feel how the truck feels. I, another thing that, and I've already pointed it out in the video itself, but um, the fact that you only get a column shifter. Yeah, they don't offer. They don't even offer a center column shifter. No. Wow. They, like, even if you go up to an LTZ or load it out, it's... it's not an option. Wow. That blows my mind. I see this truck's also got automatic start-stop on it. Um, do you know, is that the an option or standard on I like everything? I think it's standard. Okay. From what I can tell. Uh, that looks like that's the tailgate, tailgate release, yeah. if I'm if I'm reading that right. Now, one thing I do like about this truck, and once again, I'm trying to make this as unbiased as I can, even though it's totally biased, um, is I do like the fact that the USB ports are a lot easier to access than the Ford is. On the Ford, you have to slide the tray open and then kind of stick your fat hand or my fat hand in there to reach them. It's nice that they've made that easy to access. Um, and then I also like that the power outlet plug for the household is a lot lower uh, in the truck. So that way it's not, like on the Ford, it's way up high. And that kind of causes um, some issues if you're like charging your computer, or your laptop or something. Um, but I think you were saying earlier that they don't have a power outlet in the back seat. Is that yeah, right? There's, in the Ford, there's one back here, uh -huh. and they don't have that in this. It's really? It's just a 12 volt. Really? That's like uh, and that's kind of nice because I'm I'm like you you travel a lot, yeah. so you like you I, plug your laptop. I use this one. Okay. Uh, but I think the, the the power outlet plug you do, instead of getting in the back seat, you actually have it in the bed of the truck. That's a nice addition. I guess the perfect truck would have three different household outlets. Uh, you know, one in the front seat, one in the back seat, and then one in the bed of the truck. So I guess Ford and Chevrolet need to kind of come together on that one. One thing you were telling me just a few minutes ago before we started driving it, it kind of feels a little loose while you're driving it. I can kind of feel that. Like it's... Um, I mean, it's, it's a nice, soft, cushy ride, but it does feel like you're disc more disconnected to from the road than the Ford, if that makes any sense. At least that's kind of what I feel. I do like the fact that the Chevrolet has got push button start on this model, which this is kind of comparison to the XLT, uh, as the F-150 XLT only has the physical key itself. Uh, so I do like that, but I would rather have the center console shifter than yeah. the push button start. All right, Bobby, is it okay if I do like an acceleration run? You sure? Ramp it. You sure? Okay. You heard that, I got permission. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm jumping onto the uh, interstate and uh, I should be able to actually track our G-forces. I don't know that I can track zero to 60, uh, but this GoPro Hero 7, as I've already mentioned, we're giving one away, check the link in the description. But uh, it's actually got like a little thing, you should be able to, so, all right, so from a dead, actually not a dead stop, let's do five miles an hour. When you start getting into all right I cannot believe all right that was the legal speed limit just for anybody that was curious so we did not break any speed <laughs> speed <laughs> speed limits I promise you I promise you uh, but anyways I, it felt okay I mean it didn't I, once again I don't feel like it had as much acceleration as the f-150 um, but it wasn't bad it wasn't sluggish or anything Bobby, what'd you think? No, we and we know this is the same motor as last year. They did not change the motor from what we were told. Really? And, uh, you know, we get more horsepower out of the 5.0 on the dyno than we do the 5.3. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's like, I want to say 40 or 50 more horsepower out of that 5.0 motor when we dyno them without adjusting anything, you know, stock to stock. Wow. So that motor than this one. So it's confirmed. It sounds like the Ford's got a little bit more power. 
So there's a knob over here on the driver's side. I have no clue what it does. Um, it's got a little trailer image to the left and then it's got a finish flag on the right hand side. So it's kind of interesting. It's located just above the actual four wheel drive system where you have the automatic, the four, four high, four low, that kind of stuff. As we're sitting here waiting at this stoplight, uh, we actually noticed uh, for the first time, it, we literally have been around this truck for over an hour now, and we just now noticed that it does have the dual climate control system, uh, which is not available on the F-150 XLT. You do have to step up to the Lariat to do that. Uh, but it is kind of interesting to, to see that you've got that in this kind of a trim level. So that's kind of a nice plus. I'm not Obviously, this is a biased review, but it's nice that the fact that they've got that dual climate control. Before we wrap this thing up, he is looking through the book. It does look like the Chevrolet does have the uh, the sport mode and a couple of other different modes. Um, once again, <laughs> this is a biased review. I don't know my hand from my butt when it comes from a Chevrolet, but um, but I, I, as far as the Fords are concerned, I know just about everything there is to know about those. This is just kind of like I said, a uh, it's a it's a review coming from a Ford guy's perspective. What am I noticing? I'm not claiming to be the expert on the Silverado, but it is very interesting to see while you're um, just driving it, kind of experiencing it, that kind of a thing. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you're feeling like being awesome, smash that thumbs up button. If this is your first time on our channel, hit the subscribe button. And the reason for you want to do that is because we're actually giving away a GoPro Hero 7, the same camera that is being used to record this actual video itself. Also, make sure to follow SCA Performance. They are the company that were so nice to be able to let us borrow this truck so that way we can compare it to the Ford F-150. So uh, I'll have that linked in the cards right there as well and also down in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and have a great day.